Okay, this is Leonie Labs Pixel Pal software demo take six. Hi everyone, let me give you a quick overview of how the Pixel Pal software works. Uh, the Pixel Pal software lets you capture, edit, and play your own pixel patterns and animations, and I've been using it to make my own patterns uh, to go along with my Pixel Bright LED panels. So. Uh, the Pixel Pal software is just a Java app, so it's cross-platform. Uh, you won't need to do anything to install it, you just download it and run it, uh, but you do need to have uh, Java installed uh, in order for it to work correctly. Uh, the software is also open source, uh, so the source code is available. Uh, it's written in Processing 2.0. Um, I'm not a software developer, so there are plenty of funny things going on in the source code, but it uh, is available if you want to play with it. Okay, so let's just get started. Well, we're going to run it here. And when it opens up, you'll notice it's divided into three kind of main areas. On the left, we've got our pixel patterns, and this is our sort of list of files and uh, patterns and animations. Uh, we'll come back to this in just a sec. We've got uh, in the middle here our pixel player. This is where we'll be displaying the patterns. And we've also got uh, this control area with a whole bunch of controls for uh, making our own custom uh, animations and loops. On the right we have the pixel capture area. Um, this is where we'll be able to make our own uh, animations based on other content sources. So. We'll come back to this in just a minute. Uh, let's just get started by just showing how to uh, open up a pixel pattern. And uh, to do that, all we have to do is find one and click on it. And so I'm just going to start clicking through these pixel patterns over here in this list. Uh, you can see when I click it, it uh, automatically starts playing it over in my pixel player. And uh, it's just going to kind of continue looping through an animation. Uh, this play uh, button will start and stop it. And uh, up here we have three sliders, and these sliders are uh, timeline sliders showing us the number of frames in the animation as well as the uh, loop points. So the stop and start slider here will change uh, where the animation is looping from. And uh, this timeline slider lets me just scrub through uh, the different frames in the animation. Uh, that, and that's really kind of the basics of the pixel player. Uh, we can drag around these sliders and play different uh, animations just by clicking over here in our patterns list. Uh, the real fun starts when we want to capture our own pixel patterns. And so to do that, uh, we're going to use the pixel recorder over here on our uh, right side. So uh, you might have noticed that uh, this little display area here is an outdated picture of my uh, desktop background here. Uh, I can do myself a favor by hitting this grab desktop button and that's going to update uh, this this uh, indicator window. And it's just like a print screen button. You can see my uh, little Java app is showing up there. Um, but we're going to be recording frames, so the easiest way to see how this works is to load up a content source. So I've got the uh, Family Guy intro over uh, here in a Chrome browser. And I'm just uh, logged into uh, YouTube.com here. And uh, to see that over here, I hit that Grab Desktop button. Uh, down here is following uh, what's going on inside this little red rectangle. And this is a magnified view of uh, the desktop, or the capture rectangle. And you can see I'm able to move that around by uh, clicking and dragging. Uh, we've got a couple coordinates up here, the X and Y coordinates, uh, correspond to the upper left-hand coordinates, and that's of my desktop. I can change the width of it, as well as the height of it. And uh, now I'm capturing a larger window area. I can also capture a smaller area. You can see how that works. I'm just going to go back to 20 by 20 for this little demo. Uh, but we can now start recording frames. And to 
do that, we hit the uh, record button up here. And this indicator to the right is showing me the number of frames that I'm capturing. And this uh, little rectangle right here is uh, indicator gauge, and it'll start to fill up as we uh, capture longer and longer animations. And this is just indicating how big our buffer is, which is uh, several minutes. So to stop, I click the record button again, and you'll see uh, immediately a couple things happen. The animation gets transported over here to our pixel player, and immediately starts playing. Uh, I recorded here 703 frames. You can see I can uh, change these loop points here and uh, change where my animation will be playing from. Uh, so let's say I have something that I like and what I can do now is uh, click on this save button and this will let me uh, save to a file. I got uh, my application window over here and I want to navigate to my pixel bright patterns and this corresponds to this pattern list here. So I'm just going to save this as Family Guy 0. And you see I don't need an extension. These are just binary files, just list of patterns. But uh, when I do that, uh, it immediately adds it to my list here. And uh, it actually starts playing it again. So if you remember my original animation had like 700 frames. Uh, and I chopped that down. Now it has 79. Um, I can also sort of click away from it and then click back to it and you can see it's saved. Uh, there are a couple other ways to save pixel patterns and they're up here. We have an image format so if I uh, just say navigate to this frame and then hit save a PNG I can save it as an image file and if I go into my application folder PNGs I'll save it as Family Guy Image 0. And if I navigate back to that, uh, my desktop, application folder, PNGs, uh, you'll see I have saved that to an actual image file. Right there. And uh, well, it'd give me a little metadata about that. Uh, there it is see it's a 160 by 160 PNG image and uh, that scale factor corresponds to this scale factor which is uh, customizable as well. Um, if you've got an animation uh, you can save it to an animated GIF by clicking on the Save GIF button. So if I go back in here and I'll save it to my GIFs folder we'll call this Family Guy uh, we'll just say zero. Uh, this process is going to take a minute. Uh, we've got to record all 79 of those frames, but uh, when the save GIF light sort of goes off there, it's saved to the file. Here you can see I've got our GIF. It's also 160 by 160, and I can uh, play this with Windows Media Player, which will just uh, continue to loop through those frames for me, which is just kind of the same way if we're doing things over here. Um, I can open that GIF as well uh, if I want to uh, by clicking on that GIF and uh, a couple things are going to happen. Uh, it loads it into memory and then restuffs it into this other GIF here, but uh, yeah, you can see we've got it loaded up here. But uh, for most work, you'll just want to use the actual raw pattern files. So that's into the Pixel Bright Patterns folder here. So that's the gist of uh, sort of making and playing the patterns. Uh, if we want to make some customizations to the patterns, uh, we've got a couple other controls for that. Um, I'm going to change up my pattern here to make it a little bit easier to see. So we've got uh, this blend slider up here, and this is for uh, sort of like a cross dissolve of the uh, loop points. So uh, if I set it to 75, or excuse me, if I uh, adjust it to any number here, what will start to happen is the final uh, 
25 or 26 frames here will be blended with the first 25. And you can see how my animation has now changed. Um, you see that there's a kind of hard cut when it uh, loops like that. Uh, now if I adjust this to 20, see we're not going all the way to the end of the this timeline, but uh, we're actually taking those final 20 frames and blending them with the first 20. So we get a much uh, smoother looking animation. The ghost slider down here uh, does something similar except it's blending the current frame with previous flames. So uh, you can see I have this really hard edge on this color snake, but uh, when I turn down the ghost slider, I, I start to blend f previous frames with the current frame and get a much kind of smoother looking effect. So uh, there's a number of different ways to kind of customize uh, your animations here, but uh, it's all uh, relatively straightforward. So um, that's the basics of making your own patterns. Uh, there's one other feature up here I want to talk about. This is the width and height. So these two numbers are setting the number of rows and the number of columns in these pixel patterns. Uh, I can change the width here to 16. You can see it now we still have 10 rows, but now we have 16 columns. Uh, and it's a slightly larger pixel pattern. Um, this is, of course, all the same functionality still works. Um, but what you need to be careful of is the pixel patterns are just raw pixel data. And they don't have any metadata, you know, about the uh, array width or array height of your pixel pattern. So, and we try to load these pixel patterns into the pixel player, we're, we're going to get just this scrambled image. And these were made with uh, arrays of 10 by 10, so if I change this to 10 by 10, I can see that they load up just fine. Uh, but uh, they won't look correct with uh, 16 by 10, so it'll just be up to you to make sure that uh, you've got those uh, organized correctly. So that's the basics of it. Uh, you don't need any hardware to play with the Pixel Pal software here. Um, but uh, I'm slowly sort of building up my own collection and there are more available online. Um, I've included a bunch of patterns. Uh, the ones I've shown here are also included. Uh, there should probably also be some more in there by the time this is released. Um, the software is, of course, by no means complete or bug-free, and there will probably run into a lot of bugs if you ever use it, but uh, it it's hard to beat in terms of uh, ease of use and making a whole bunch of pixel patterns based off of uh, the content of your choosing. That's the real uh, sort of nice feature of this program is that uh, you can use any content source. Uh, you don't have to know how to program to be able to generate these pixel patterns. Um, but the software and all the source code and everything is available on the Leone Labs Pixelbrite GitHub repo. And I uh, just wanted to say thanks to Adafruit and all the other providers of the open source hardware and software. That's those contributors that uh, really have made uh, this Pixel Pal software uh, happen. So, anyway, if you'd like to get in touch, uh, get in touch with through me through my website, uh, leonilabs.com.